Right, some time ago I did a video on how to change the potentiometer switch on the Chinese mini lathe. Um, these are a weak point on the lathe and they keep breaking, um, specifically on the actual switch mechanism inside. Um, I've had probably two or three um, new ones of these since I um, did that video. Um, they're about £10 to buy, so they're quite expensive for what they are. Um, I've tried to locate this one in China, um, it's a special one, um, but I can't seem to actually find it. Um, it's special in that when the um, potentiometer is turned fully anti-clockwise, the switch at the back is bridged, and that's to actually reset the electrics um, or the circuit board so you can actually turn the lathe into reverse. If the switch mechanism breaks inside, um, normally you can switch the lathe straight into reverse without it actually stopping. And um, that's not good for the lathe, um, so it's important to change this one as soon as that switch breaks. Now when I did that video, someone kindly um, wrote underneath in the comments section of a much cheaper alternative and a much better quality um, potentiometer. Like I say, these ones cost about £10 and you have to get them from the actual lathe supplier, so they're not cheap. Um, but this one here is from Maplins and it only costs £1.50. It's a much better potentiometer, a really good switch mechanism inside, and they last a lot longer than these. Now the only drawback with the Maplin's potentiometer is that these are actually set in the normal rotation, where you turn the um, potentiometer clockwise and the switch contact is bridged at the back. So it's actually opposite again to this one. Um, but that's no problem because you can actually quickly and easily take these apart and move the contacts about um, to reverse that. So um, if you have a look on the back of the potentiometer, you'll see two extra slots which have been cut in the casing and all that you're doing basically is moving these two contacts over into those two slots. Um, but you've got to do that um, by actually taking it apart in the first place. So the um, casing on the switch mechanism is held together with two um, copper pins, uh, hollow copper pins which are slightly swaged over at this end and I found the easiest method of actually um, getting those um, to uh, pull through the plastic is to use a small um, ball shaped cutter I don't know whether you can see that there on the Dremel um, and basically you switch on and just push that down onto that copper And you need to work over a, um, a nice surface, a uh, bench surface like this, um, because when you pull it apart, there's a, a red switch activator um, which can fall out and you can easily lose that. So that should just pull off now like that. And there's the um, switch, uh, plastic switch mechanism, which you can lose. And um, you've obviously got to put that back in the right um, position. There's the actual um, switch mechanism and if you're familiar with the Chinese mini lathe one you'll see that that's much better, much more positive and less likely to break. In fact I haven't had one um, break at all yet. So um, at the moment the contact uh, making contact with those um, um, blades there in that position so switch it into the um, off position so you can actually push those blades out just one and 
and two. Switch it back over into the um, opposite way and put them in the um, opposite slots. It's a bit fiddly but um, sometimes they're a bit tight. Might just have to use a pair of pliers on that. Oh no, there we go. So there we are, it's pushed into the um, opposite side now. Um, you can see that the um, switches have um, point ends on, like on points of a car or on timing. Um, it doesn't matter, um, you can't actually turn those blades around as far as I know. Um, but there's enough um, metal on the back of those to actually make um, nice contact with those blades still. And I found that every one that I've done uh, works perfectly um, when it's reassembled. So next, um, before reassembly, you have um, two pieces of the copper um, rivet sticking out there. And what you do with those is you either pull them out um, or bend them backwards and forwards, which seemed to be the easiest method, and break them off. Like that. So when it's ready to go together, um, put the spindle in the fully anti-clockwise um, position. Um, you can see the pins, solder pins there. The uh, red tab is pointing that way. And you can actually make sure the um, switch is in the new contact position with the actual points um, touching the actual contacts. And then you can actually Put that one on carefully and it should pick up with that slot. You might just have to joggle the spindle a bit and that's working like that. And push that one together. And I found the best, quickest, um, easiest method of actually holding it all together again is to use the very um, sticky duct tape and actually hold it together and tape around the actual join. And I've never had one of these come apart um, after doing this. So that's perfectly held together and the switch is working perfectly. And you can test the potentiometer switch now to see that it's working correctly. Um, you can connect it um, in two positions. Um, this one is the uh, two um, contacts which you've changed, which you can see the empty slots there. Um, you can either connect it one to this um, contact and one to this one, or the opposite side. So put the contact on this one. And when the um, potentiometer is turned fully anti-clockwise, it makes contact. Turn the spindle speed up and the contact is broken. So every time you turn this one down, turn the spindle down, as soon as you turn it into what would be the off position, the switch is making contact. So that's a great alternative for buying the um, expensive um, cheap ones and when you put one of these on 
um, I very much doubt that you'll have any problems with it for a few years or more. So then all you do have to do is fit it back into the um, electrical box on the mini lathe and the uh, contacts here are exactly the same um, P1 is on this one here if you have the pins on the right remember this P1 on the lower one P2 on the middle one and P3 on the top one and then when I've um, put it in the lathe um, my normal um, switch knob wouldn't go on there obviously because it's a half circle um, so what I did I made up a new um, knob for it I made a nice brass one which is this one here made out of a piece of 19 millimeter diameter brass um, nailed it put a couple of grooves to make it look better um, drilled it through so that the actual um, plastic spindle there can go right through it and um, makes it easier than having to cut this to a certain depth um, I've put a counter bore in the end of that one because this thread here sticks through a bit further on the um, mini lathe electrical box so that counter bore goes down over that thread and then I've got a 2BA um, grub screw which actually locks it onto the um, potentiometer spindle there and then when it's all locked up just saw that um, plastic spindle off um, with a junior hacksaw and just tidy up the end and that one makes a nice new switch knob and that's it all reassembled on the mini lathe again and fully working So that works great, I'm very pleased with that upgrade, it works lovely and smoothly, the switch works perfectly and I thank the person that actually uh, wrote on my comment section and actually gave me that idea. So there we have it, I've converted three of these Maplins ones over now for use on the mini lathe in a matter of minutes. Um, so it's going to be a huge saving on actually getting potentiometers. Um, this one, like I say, is a much better quality than the actual original uh, Chinese mini lathe one. And you can actually buy six of these compared with the price of one of these. Plus I'm told um, that these ones actually last a lot longer. And I very much doubt that they'll actually fail on that. Um, switch mechanism and I'll put a link below the video where you can actually buy this actual 4.7k potentiometer